So we are at Grace Bible Camp. We're interviewing Pastor Matthew Watts for our oral history course. The date is December 9th, 2019. We are in Charleston, West Virginia. Pastor Watts, could you please tell me about where you were born and your birth date? Well, I was born on June, uh, I'm sorry, January the 30th. 1956 um, in a little community called Mount Hope, West Virginia. It's about 60 miles south of here between Oak Hill and Beckley. And I was born actually at home up on a mountain called McDonald Hill in a little community uh, there in Mount Hope, West Virginia uh, in 1956. It was a wonderful community to be, uh, be born and raised in. Um, could you also tell me, what did your parents do for a living? Uh, my father and my mother were not married, but my father was a coal miner, uh, and my mother was a, a keeper of the home. I mean, we were raised like a lot of uh, children in southern West Virginia at the time. Uh, we were raised uh, you know, in poverty, a pretty humble means. Uh, my, my mother received a welfare stipend. We had commodities before there were, were food stamps, but my mother uh, uh, had to support my grandmother. Uh, I was the fourth of, of seven children, and so my mother uh, uh, had support from my grandmother who helped to raise us, and I actually kind of shuttled back and forth between uh, my mother and my grandmother until my mother, uh, grandmother died when I was age 11. Okay. Um, so you said it was a good neighborhood, uh, or at least a good town to grew up in. Can you give me some details about the neighborhood? Uh, it, it was a wonderful place. I mean, as children, uh, we always felt cared for. Uh, we felt valued by the community, not only by our, our parents, my mother, my grandmother, but we felt valued by the neighbors. We felt valued by the minister in the community who took an interest uh, in all the children, uh, the older people, the elders in the community. And the community seemed to have high expectations and high hopes for us. And so we were never told that we could not do something. Uh, there was expectation that we would achieve uh, academically. There was exp high expectation we'd be solid uh, citizens, our deportment and our behavior. So it was a wonderful place. You know, we didn't have a lot uh, materially, uh, but we made do it what we had and we played hard as children. <laughs> football, basketball, baseball, uh, uh, sandlot, unorganized uh, as, as children growing up. But we knew how to make fun and how to enjoy each other's company, each, other, each other's friendship, and how to take simple things and make them special. Excellent. So you said that you have, you're one of seven uh, siblings. That's correct. Um, what was it like with, like, were you guys really close with each other? We were very close growing up, and we're close until this day. Uh, my oldest brother uh, uh, was killed suddenly and unexpectedly uh, when he was 17, I was age nine. But uh, my other siblings, we were very close. We were taught to be close uh, by our mother and my grandmother. We were taught that family was important, that loyalty to the family was important, and supporting each other was important. So. Uh, having six and seven people together. We often would have a cousin or two staying with us, or sometimes there would be, you know, seven to nine uh, children that were living in close quarters with each other. We fought hard, we played hard, we got along, we learned how to forgive and move forward, but we always felt that uh, we had the support of each other in whatever we did. Okay, excellent. Um, so I did a little bit of research on a bit, some of the areas that you're from. And I found that in Mount Hope, there was a place called Stadium Terrace Public Housing. That's correct. Um, there was a separation of white camps and colored camps. Can That's you correct. tell me a little bit about that? Yeah, when I was, uh, we lived on McDonald Hill um, until I was six. Um, my grandmother, who I'd stayed with, often as I shared with her earlier, she was somewhat of a gypsy. We would move this place, we would move that place. I think we stayed in the same house three times. And they were substandard houses, didn't have indoor uh, plumbing, things didn't work quite well. But uh, she kept a roof over our head at all times. Uh, and then when I was six, um, six and a half years of age, she got approved to move into the public housing. It was called the Stadium Terrace. It was public housing. I, was, I think it was built sometime after Roosevelt's New Deal. 
in the 30s, 40s maybe, somewhere around that time frame. But this is the first time that we lived in a house that actually had indoor plumbing at work. So we thought that was a move, step in the right direction. We were like uh, George Jefferson, we were moving up uh, in the world. And it was interesting because um, uh, it was segregated. And uh, there were like, um, I think, um, 10 duplexes that made up the colored camp, as it was referred to that. And there were like 20 families. So we're normally 18 to 20 families that lived in, the, in what was called the colored camp. And we were separated probably about a quarter of a mile, I would say. And, uh, and there was probably 25 um, public housing units in the white camp. It was probably 50 families. And that was just life the way it was. And so, you know, I was born in 1956. Uh, but West Virginia was, was quite segregated in a lot of ways. We were a part of the uh, southern states, even though it wasn't admitted and talked a lot about, but West Virginia being the only state that was uh, born during the Civil War, so we've been a part of the Virginia Commonwealth. And so there was segregation in West Virginia, just like there was se segregation in, in most southern states and then in many northern states. So we were kind of born into that. And because the African-American community was pretty small, we kind of knew our place, you know, and we figured out how to stay in our place to not have to deal with uh, some of the consequences for, for not sort of being in your place. So um, uh, the town was pretty much segregated. Blacks live in certain parts of the town, you know, whites live in other certain parts of the town. You'd have a street where blacks and whites lived on, but that street would be segregated. That the upper part would be Caucasian, the lower part would be blacks as was the case with Main Street in, in Mount Hope. So, uh, but again, you know, it wasn't the harsh, um, uh, you know, oppressive type of segregation that we watched on television, right, in, in terms of watching uh, Montgomery, Alabama, or uh, uh, places in, uh, in Mississippi and in Georgia. But uh, we, we knew there was a difference, and we felt like that we were treated differently. Um. Just to clarify, do you know if that was a uh, was it like was it law that was segregated? Or was it just more of like a like a culture hair or culture thing that was going on between in the community? No, I'm pretty sure that it started out as being the law, mm -hmm. and most people don't realize is that public housing in America was created to be segregated. As a matter of fact, America is segregated because the federal government chose to establish public housing on a segregated basis. You, you Richard, uh, read uh, Mr. Richard Rothstein's incredible uh, book, The Color of Law, and he shows how the federal government did more to segregate America uh, after, you know, during, uh, after slavery uh, and during the time of segregation because of the way the federal government funded housing, and in some cases, it would deny blacks access to federal loans to purchase housing, right? So like the GI Bill, men coming from, <coughs> and most federally funded public housing uh, complexes that were built during the Roosevelt administration and after that was built on strictly a segregated basis. So they were built to be segregated, and that segregation extended from the time they were constructed. What, what I found ironic as a kid growing up is I'd never forget, I remember very, very vividly uh, in the summer of 1964 uh, when the Civil Rights Act was passed, you know. And so we thought things would change dramatically in our community, but they really didn't. I was going to segregated schools before the Civil Rights Act passed. I was going to segregated schools after the Civil Rights Act passed. We went to the movie theater, it was segregated by race. The African-Americans sat up in the balcony. Uh, the Caucasians sit on the floor and they sit on the right. We were restricted uh, to the, to the left-hand side. And when my mother uh, moved out of the Stadium Terrace public housing complex um, in the summer of 1973, it was still segregated by race. Now, we're talking about, you know, eight years, you know, after uh, the Civil Rights Act of 1965. Now, I'm not sure if the segregation then was legal, but it was still practice. And at some time when I was in college, between 73 and 77, is when the public housing complex in Mount Hope was finally uh, integrated. Okay. 
Um, so during your time in uh, at WDB Du Bois Elementary, um, can you tell me where it was located at? Yeah, W. Du Bois Elementary School was located on um, in a place that was called Kessler's Holler, right? That's what it was called. It was named after a family, a Caucasian family that had kind of settled that part of the community. And so you have the main street, the main drag uh, that comes in the, uh, in the Mount Hope, and then, uh, and then you'd turn off the main street and you'd wind back up in a hollow. There were a lot of people that lived alongside the streets you went up, and it wasn't far, uh, maybe uh, from the main street, maybe half of a mile. And uh, the school literally was built on the side of a hill, uh, traditional to the way the segregated elementary schools were built at the time wooden frame structure kind of built into the side of the hill. Uh, it had uh, four classrooms. It had a kitchen. And I can remember very vividly the cafeteria was a counter that went down the hallway, uh, in the hallway and circled around, and, and that's where we had the counter. And so uh, uh, that was Kessler's Hall or W. Bulls Elementary School. And unfortunately, uh, when the school was closed, I believe in 19... 66, if my memory serves me correctly, that someone set fire to it, so it was burned down, so there's no structure that remains there. Uh, but the steps <laughs> actually are still there. Uh, the steps that you had to walk up to go into the school are still there. And uh, this past summer, my youngest sister was home and we were up in Mount Hope for my stepmother's 100th year birthday. And uh, we kind of took our children up in Kessel's Hollow where they could see where they, where we had gone to school. And my sister made know the fact that the steps, she thought it was symbolic and very poetic, that the steps remain, because we were always told that we were climbing, that we were going up. So the steps were still there that we had to walk up every morning to get into the school building. 